had an interesting interview on the Lex Freeman podcast, which uh, if you don't listen to Lex Freeman podcast, he has a lot of interesting guests on there. He does. So I highly recommend it for at least for the guests you're interested in. This one I was interested in, Andre uh, Carpathy. He's very famous in machine learning world. So I've read some of his papers. Excellent. I've known about him for years. He was the director of right. uh, Tesla. Yeah, he, was, he worked at Tesla. So he worked in open AI and, you know, did all that kind of stuff. But he, he worked at Tesla as the director of their, you know, machine learning FSD group. And he just recently left earlier this year. For those that don't remember, he went on a sabbatical and then decided he wasn't coming back, but still on good terms. He did, he did talk in the interview a bit about he would be open to coming back and yada, yada in the future. He's still very much on good terms with, uh, with Elon. There was an interesting section where uh, he spoke about the removing of sensors and like pulling out radar and pulling out the ultrasonics. Uh, Lex hit him with this question and he had a, he had a kind of an interesting re response, which I think we'll we play a clip right now. So you can see what it was, and then we'll talk about it. That these sensors are an asset to you. Yeah. But if you fully consider the entire product in its entirety, these sensors are actually potentially a liability uh, because these sensors aren't free. They don't just appear on your car. You need, suddenly you need to have an entire supply chain. You have people procuring it. Uh, there can be problems with them. They may need replacement. They are part of the manufacturing process. They can hold back the line in production. Uh, you need to source them. You need to maintain them. You have to have teams that write the firmware, all of the, all of it, and then uh, you also have to incorporate them, fuse them into the system in some way. And so it actually like bloats the organ, the a lot of it. And I think Elon is really good at simplify, simplify. Best part is no part, mm -hmm. and he always tries to throw away things that are not essential because he understands the entropy in organizations and in approach. And I think uh, in this case, the cost is high, and you're not potentially seeing it if you're just a computer vision engineer. And I'm just trying to improve my network. And you know, is it more useful or less useful? How how useful is it? And the, the thing is, if once you consider the full cost of a sensor, it actually is potentially a liability. And you need to be really sure that it's giving you extremely useful information. In this case, we looked at using it or not using it, and the delta was not massive, and so it's not useful. <laughs> what, are, what are your thoughts on that? I know what my thoughts are. I'm curious, Doug. Doug yeah. Get with your thoughts. So so I mean, you know, just. So people know he was talking about the removal of, of uh, radar and, and now with the removal of the ultrasonic sensors. And, uh, you know, it sounds very Elon, you know, the best part is no part. Uh, you know, later he talks you about- You see why they get along. <laughs> later he talks about, you know, vision, you know, being uh, uh, necessary and sufficient, right? <laughs> so it's, so, you know, it's just enough and good enough, uh, I guess is how they're looking at it. That's fine. Uh, I still want my ultrasonic sensors. <laughs> we had uh, James Locke on, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and I liked his approach to it. It's like, well, we want it to be superhuman, right? And how is it superhuman? Certainly, it can have superhuman processing. You can give it cameras that are superhuman too, uh, that maybe look into the IR as uh, as well as visible. But, uh, you know, I kind of like having other modalities as well. You know, I, I think the reality is that they need to solve the problem that they have. And they're just trying to solve the simplest problem and trying to actually get to that MVP, that the minimum viable product that they don't quite yet have for level four. Uh, yeah. And maybe once they get that, you know, maybe they can start adding back in that stuff. But, you know, I, I'm happy to have ultrasonic sensors separate from FSD. You know, I just want them for my own aid when I'm right. actually driving, right? Right. What about you, Mike? What do, what do you think about so, uh, his take on it? <laughs> my wife and I were actually talking about this interview today. And I took the position that I think he's right and I think he's wrong. I, I think he's right short term that, yes, there are supply chain considerations. It adds overhead to building whatever it is you're putting the sensors in it adds or it can add noise to the compute you know trying to sort all that out and you have to have a team of people kind of working with it that's great but later on in the interview he says you know well humans have used their eyes for years successfully driving there's no reason we can't use vision successfully driving and i'm paraphrasing a bit first thought about that was sure we do and in the, in, in the aeronautic world, aeronautical world, we call that visual flight rules. And that's because humans are kind of dumb and blind at night when we don't have good illumination. 
we're dumb and blind when you can't see beyond your car's hood because of fog, rain, snow, whatever the obstruction is. And the different modalities of different sensors comes into play heavily right there. As, as Doug was just saying, you want your, you want your car to be superhuman. You want it to be better than you are. And just having something the same as me doesn't give me a warm fuzzy when I'm doing 70 miles an hour down the freeway and it's foggy. I'm sorry. That's, that's yeah. not a good thing. So I think he's got the right idea. I think he's too early in the game for that idea. Yeah. I kind of agree with both of you. I mean, the, what kind of bothered me about the answer is it's very much from a cost and manufacturing, right? Like it's a lot about supply chain and, but, but, you know, but, but that's all Elon. That's Elon. I mean, it's all about cost. cost. It's about cost and all of that. So it's like, yes, I don't think anyone's going to disagree from a cost standpoint. It is, you know, it's obviously cheaper to remove sensors. I think from a, Solving it problem, though, as Doug mentioned, is probably also easier to only solve it with one uh, with one form of sensor, you know, just having camera feeds and not having to deal with additional signals is like a simpler problem to solve from an engineering standpoint. However, define solve, right? Because there's a certain rate of accuracy. There's always going to be some failure uh, percentage of it not working well. And so kind of this idea of, well, other sensors, radar, LIDAR, whatever, you know, ultrasonics, they can fix some of those error rates and enable you to um, to work past them. But by all, also, though, he's not wrong, right? We do it with just eyes. Does that mean the car can't do it better with just cameras? No. Um, but I don't know. When's it going to be done? Um, and I think the big issue is, right, like we adjust. We can, we can move our heads. We can wipe our eyes. We can do all those types of things. Um, whereas cameras, it's harder to do that, right? They're in a fixed position. But uh, anyway, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, I, I guess it kind of echoes some of what we've talked about in previous podcasts where, yeah, it's, it's a, it doesn't automatically make it worse by not having the sensors, but it does limit your modes of input. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's something called risk assessment. And, you know, if I'd be curious what the risk assessment conversation was of removing sensors and leaving just vision or leaving sensors, ultrasonic radar, whatever, with the vision. I right. mean, there, there's certainly going to be more risk if you take something away and you don't really have 100% replacement ready yet. Right. And the cameras are not 100% ready yet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I agree that car, uh, he said car cameras are going to be a 1,000% powerful than the human eyes. Um, yeah, I mean, eventually. At like, some could point. You, <laughs> could you make it superhuman with cameras? For sure, right? So like, you know, a human eye can only focus on one focal length right at a time. You could have multiple cameras at different focal lengths that are focusing and getting clearer pictures. Well, and you got different bands. Cameras can yeah. also can see better at night. So you can have cameras that work really well in low light. You can do mm -hmm. infrared cameras. Like there's, there's many opportunities there to be better than humans. But for the same cost and the efficiency and all the other things, it's really hard. We'll have to see where it goes. But as it stands, I agree with Andre and I wouldn't necessarily remove the things that Tesla's removing, but in the same situation, maybe I'd make that call with the amount of money at stake. Um, and certainly the car should continue to get better and better, even with them removing sensors.